You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Little Miracles with your host, Penelope. Through her own personal healing, Penelope can transform all aspects of your life through numerous modalities and techniques, including Reiki, energy healing, cranial sacral therapy, and more. So now, please welcome the host of Little Miracles, Penelope. Welcome. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, we'll be talking with Hugh McGreedy, a Course in Miracles teacher, and Valerie Evans, a Unity Church elder. The inspiration for this program is an article from a Times Magazine book called The Science of Happiness. The article that we're going to talk about mostly is an article by uh, what's well, called The Secrets of a Happier Life, and it's by Emma Cipala. This show, Little Miracles, is a forum which I can share some of my knowledge of holistic healing and simple techniques that you can do for yourself and which make a big difference. Today we will talk about the science of happiness. Now, um... Uh, Valerie and Hugh, would you please pipe in when you feel like it? I'm going to start talking a little bit about the science of happiness and the article that uh, from the Times Magazine uh, special edition. Uh, this is a quote from Abraham Lincoln. Most folks are as happy as they decide to be. Well, ain't that the truth? In the race to find what we think will ultimately bring us joy, we are actually hurting our chances of getting there. Here's a strategy that works. There's always a to-do list. Always. We're always trying to accomplish more. And there's always, of course, a coworker who does more than we do. So we always strive nonstop to exceed our goals, constantly playing catch up with our ambitions and the to-do list. Why? Because we live by a faulty theory that if you want to if you want to succeed, you need to continually be getting things done and moving on to the next goal as quickly as possible. Your mind is always on the next task, the next accomplishment, and the next person you need to talk to. In the process, in this process, we sacrifice the present, foregoing personal happiness, enduring negative feelings, and tremendous stress because we believe that the eventual payoff will be worth it. As a consequence, we get caught up in frantic and anxious workaholism. We may find ourselves asking, what am I doing? What am I doing now to reach my future goals? We get so hooked. We get so hooked on getting things done because we think the payoff will ultimately lead to happiness, but it doesn't. So let's talk about that. Valerie, do you have uh, an opinion about this? About what makes you happy? About um, how we... Go, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, about what makes you happy. There are a lot of things 
that um, that make you happy, to contribute to your making happy. I mean, you can be kind to other people. You can um, cultivate very close friends. And that's a very, very important part about it. And have goals that you try to reach, things that you try to accomplish. There are a lot of things that lead to happiness. Okay. All right. Well, do you do you um, agree with what I was talking about? Meaning that we're always we're always one step ahead of ourselves. We're always uh, trying to to check things off the to, to do list. Uh, we're always trying to accomplish more. And we well, the the um, casualty is being in the present. We're we're hardly ever here. What do you think about that? I, I think that you're right that most people are trying to do are trying are looking for the next best better thing to do instead of living in the moment <clears throat> which is rather unfortunate because they don't they don't get to enjoy the moment that they're in and therefore they're probably not very happy. Amen. Amen. Hugh, do you have any uh, opinions on that? Yeah, I do, Penelope. Thank you. First, I wanted to realize and recognize for our audience that I actually picked up this Time Magazine article, The Science of Happiness, because I was just astounded that the, the secular media had really um, come out and given happiness some type of scientific approach. It's kind of like validating happiness where science would – be reluctant to agree with anything or buy into anything that couldn't be measured. So the science of happiness title first takes a look at how I think our culture is shifting in the idea that this is happiness is starting to be recognized as valuable in our culture. We don't wasn't in the past. So I see a, a major shift here for that. But looking at the article and looking at it from the Course of Miracles perspective, it, I appreciate that they're trying to get there, but they're looking in the wrong direction, which is always the case for things in the world. Because what what he's, the woman in the article is describing is looking for happiness to, outside of us, where the Course in Miracles would always explicitly um, point to the inside, that happiness is an inside job. The happiness has to occur with, from within, and then it's extended outward. So what she's describing here is multitasking and always trying to achieve to get something because we think we're trying to go and and acquire something that's going to make me happy instead of understanding that happiness is already my function that that's what my creator had given me as my that's my job is to be happy so it becomes a choice a real choice in a, in a way of a choice of free will to decide to be happy regardless of what is happening. And this happiness that I'm choosing isn't the happiness that I think will make me happy, which is another path to um, sadness, <laughs> actually. Yes, but yes. It's the, it's the happiness that's presented to me that is not from me. It's like through me idea. So if I go and think that my, a new car or a new job is going to make me happy, it may for a short while or a new boat. But then that's going to fade because things here don't last. It does. It can't be sustained because the Course of Miracles would describe the world as not being an illusion in the aspect that it's not in love. In love, it's it's outside of love's realm, and therefore it can't be um, sustained. And then we put our faith in these things, and, and even like in an idol type thing, this thing's going to save me. And when it fades and suffering occurs. So it turns out that one, what one thing made me happy, the same thing will make me very sad later. So one of the emphasis that I wanted to point out is that we really don't need anything to be happy, but we do need something to be sad. Well, we're going to take a break and, and have a word from our sponsors. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. 
Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you little miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, we're talking about the science of happiness and actually the spirituality of happiness also. Uh, with the, so, so we're getting um, ideas from a, a, time special, a time book. It's like kind of a special edition about the science of happiness. The, the research results about happiness, what really makes us happy as opposed to what we think makes us happy. And then also we're going to get the perspective from Hugh McCready to talk about the Course in Miracles, what, uh, what the spiritual, hmm, but the spiritual realm of the Course in Miracles has to say about it. So, um, uh, Hugh, when we left for commercial, you were just finishing a thought. Did, is there more that you would like to say? Yes. Thanks, Penelope. I, I was saying that we don't need anything to be happy, but we do need something to be sad. So in that idea, happiness asks for nothing. That's very different than what we would read in the article, because the article's offering things that would make us happy instead of looking at it, again, from an inside job and just being happy. Um, being happy, because that's my state of being, and I don't need anything outside or external to make me happy, which are goals, achievements, and other multitasking things that the, this article represents and saying, you know, these are things that you're trying to chase around that trying to make yourself happy with. So we're kind of in alignment with that idea. But it's the idea of being happy is a state of mind where you're just happy. You don't have a reason for happiness. It's the same as love. Love has no reason. It's just loving. It's the same as joy. Joy doesn't have a reason either. It's just a state of being. It's a state of mind that the spirituality with perspective would have us be aware of in ourselves and then extend that out into the world, and the world automatically becomes a happy, joyful, loving place <laughs> because it's coming now, from now me. Can, I'm not trying to go out in the world and get it. Can I yeah. can I add to that? I mm-hmm. I how do you say this? I've been thinking about this, uh, which of course we think too much. But in thinking about this, I think that joy and love are our natural state. And anything else is something that we created, like something something that you know came at us, like bad weather. Uh, what what do you think about that, yep. Hugh? 
Well, if of course, we, the if miracles we could... would say love has no opposite, and happiness has no opposite either, unless we want to invent one. Because in the, you know, in the oneness of love and everything being love aspect of spiritual recognition, there is nothing outside of that. But yet we want to experience something outside of that, and therefore we make we make the illusion of the suffering thing idea. It kind of goes like this. The metaphysics is that I feel like being sad, but I don't realize that I'm feeling sad. But that feeling of sadness in me, when I look out into the world, I find something that's going to support or bear witness to my feeling. And then I can blame that thing for me not feeling sad. And I think that's the reason for my sadness instead of really recognizing and working within and saying, no, I'm choosing to feel sad for some reason, and then do that internal work to find out why we're choosing to feel sad, and then forgive it and release it, and then you don't have that feeling anymore. But if I feel to be happy at the same way, and if choosing to be happy, the same effect occurs. If I choose to be happy, I look out into a world again, and I see happy things because what I want to see is going to support my state of mind. So I only see happy things when I'm when I'm in a state of happiness. So it kind of multiplies itself that way, the same way sadness does, and we cause depression and a lot of other ailments in us. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. And you know, this article almost went that far, but not quite. But but yeah. I I I it makes me hopeful because uh, all the research and everything is is pointing in this direction. So it's, uh, <laughs> I think the two paths are going to meet up possibly at the horizon, but the, I think they are going to meet up. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, is there more that yeah. you want to say about that right now? Yeah, I thought that that's what I, that's why I picked out the article because I thought time magazine and the media itself is recognizing a lot of these things that um, I guess the world is, and especially the West, is actually embracing yoga, meditation, mindfulness, that kind of like walking in nature and things. It's really meant to slow down the mind, the monkey mind, and, and come back into a state, bring your mind back into a state of where your joy is. It's not missing, and it's not outside of you. You're just clouding it up with all this other stuff. So these techniques that are in the book are actually being used in a lot of, it's almost you know, universal in the East anymore. There's so many yoga classes going on and different types of spiritual or Western Eastern philosophies are being um, adopted here. And it's proving to actually work for people. And that's why it's catching on because it really does work. But the whole idea around what the article is trying to get is saying, Got to slow down your monkey mind, the egoic mind, the mind that always wants to achieve, always isn't satisfied with what is, and sit back in stillness and quiet and get back into a zone where you can feel the happiness that's already within you. And once you find that, you don't need that stuff anymore. It goes away. So there's no sacrifice involved in these things that are like I have to give up anything, you'll find out that you don't need it, and then it'll actually go away on its own as far as you know, racing around and being a crazy person and working 80 hours a week and all that to try and achieve something that's not really going to bring you anything sustainable in the long run because in the end, no matter how many toys you have, you know, um, it's not going to matter at the end. Right, right. Well, let me read a little bit more from this article, and because uh, I think it uh, corroborates what you were just saying. We get caught up in the compulsion to constantly achieve, always, always creating more. We ha- and we have, but we do that even before we finish one task. Our mind is on to the next one. The problem comes. When we keep delaying our happiness in favor of getting more things done. Oh, this is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back and I'll talk about the article. Horses, mystical, present, past and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic and healing for everyone. 
Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you little miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're talking about the science of happiness and the spirituality of happiness in Course in Miracles. And I, I uh, just like um, Hugh, I'm very impressed with this uh, uh, Time Magazine book. It's called The Science of Happiness. In that we know a little bit more than we used to. So I'm going to read just a little bit more from this article, and then we're going to talk. The problem comes when we keep delaying our happiness in favor of getting more things done so that we can be even happier later, or so we think. The reason that we are so hooked on getting things done is that we believe the payoff that comes from achievements and is an award or a larger savings account will ultimately lead to the biggest payoff of all happiness, but it doesn't. Uh, Valerie, would you like to uh, talk about that a little bit? What's your opinion? Um, well, uh, trying to get things and trying to reach goals is very good. But it's not what you have to do, as he would say, you have to learn, you have to live in the moment and see what's happy around you right now. I mean, you can't look to your future for your happiness all the time. You have to choose your attitude, be grateful for what you have, have, I guess, um, optimism for your future, because th- th- uh, things are going to hurt you, and you have to take them as temporary, like a pessimist is going to take bad things as a permanent, you know, like, woe is me, this horrible thing happened, I'm horrible too. But someone who's optimistic is going to believe whatever bad happened is temporary and you can get through it. Right, right. Yes, those are good points. Those are good points, Valerie. We can can do this. And, you know, for some of us, and my family, when I was growing up, they they were all pessimists. Everything was awful. Everything was awful and terrible. And, you know, that's no way to grow up. My gosh. Because uh, it's all a choice. We didn't, I didn't know that it's all a choice. It's, um, we are not at the mercy of the the vagaries of the day. We're, it's not, we're not weather. We're, we're, I really, literally, we are the center of our own universe and we can choose, which is still amazing to me. We could choose whether something makes us happy or whether we're sad and depressed. We get to choose that. You know, look at looking, looking at something and say, you know, 
I don't have to go there. I do not have to go into the dungeon and, you know, uh, eat poop. I don't have to do that. I can be thankful. I can be thankful for the day. I can be thankful for my family, for my uh, pets, <clears throat> for the goodness that is in my life. It's all a choice. Uh, Hugh, what would you like to add to that? Yes, thank you. I, uh, you touched on this futuristic idea of I need more to be happy. Be, I can't be happy now. I can't be happy until I get this or I get that. That always puts the right. the, the carrot and the stick together, and I'm always chasing something that I can never be satisfied with. Now, our egoic state, a uh, state of separation, the Course would say separate it from love, is this need to keep getting things. It doesn't matter to the ego what it need, what it thinks it needs, as long as it gets more of it. It's always more and more and more and more. And that's why you see things getting bigger and you know, the bigger cars and the bigger jobs and the more money I have and the bigger house I have. And it just gets crazy after a while, but it's always chasing something more because it feels itself inside as being so less and, and lacking that it has to try and fill its, this void with all this more and more. And it can never be filled because it's an illusion. It's an illusionary state that we're trying to deal with. The Course of Miracles would say that you're already loved, which is the same as being happy. So Lesson 103 says, God, our Creator, being loved is also happiness. And if I can read a paragraph to you, it will explain itself. Sure, it go ahead. In the text, in the Lesson 3, uh, 103, happiness is an attribute of love. It cannot be apart from it, nor can it be experienced where love is not. Love has no limits, being everywhere, and therefore joy is everywhere as well. Yet can the mind deny that this is so, believing there are gaps in love where sin can enter, bringing pain instead of joy. This strange belief would limit happiness by redefining love as limited and introducing opposition to what has no limit and no opposite. So it's our own sense of lack that we're perceiving that isn't true, based on our egoic perceptions that we need to keep continuing to fill, thinking that love or and the same thing as God being love, joy, happiness, all those synonyms for God and love aren't aren't full and complete already. The oneness isn't one because there's something missing. And that's driving all the chaotic behaviors and states of, you know, um, um suffering in the world today. So God right. being love is also happiness, and to fear him is to be afraid of joy. So we need to really be able to embrace that idea, and the Course really has only one solution for this predicament that we find ourselves in, and that's forgiveness. So forgiveness and happiness are one, too, and it's actually the Course says that that's my function, is happiness is my function, but happiness and forgiveness are the same thing because I need to be able to forgive myself for what I seemingly think I lack and able to accept what creation or universe or God has offered me right now and accept that for what is what would bring me my happiness because I'm not satisfied with what's now. I think now has to be modified somehow so that I can have something else. <laughs> so it's never gotcha. achieved and therefore it keeps us in a state of agitation all the time. So it goes back a, a to that constant, idea of a futuristic state. Right, keep like getting, a constant yeah, treadmill. Keep mm -hmm. Yep, keep running on the treadmill until you collapse and fall over, and then you have to do it over again. Wow. So idea, forgiveness is the key to happiness, the Course says. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. If I want to really be happy, I have to forgive myself for thinking that what is offered me now from, from my Creator is not good enough. And that's the issue I have. I think I'm not getting everything. Of course, in Miracles teaches us that God gave us everything, and yet we're not satisfied with it because we think it needs to be something else. So we have this thing of what I think happiness should be and what God or creation thinks happiness should be. So Lesson 101 says, God's will for me is perfect happiness. That really means that it's not my will of what happiness is or my definition of what happiness is. 
that it's it's my creator's definition of what happiness is. And when I let go of my concepts of what happiness or what things will bring happiness, I'll be open to actually receive it. Uh, excuse me, Hugh. We have to go out for commercial. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're talking today about the science of happiness and the spirituality of happiness as it is uh, given us in The Course in Miracles. Um, We were just talking with uh, Valerie uh, on the break. Valerie, would you be willing to bring up that question you had for Hugh? No, well, or what I was saying was, I love the Course in Miracles. It's really beautiful, but it's so difficult because he says, you know, choose again, choose to be happy, choose for what God wants you to be, because you're born to be happy. I understand that, and I even, I even agree with it in a way. But you have to live in this world, and in this world that we have to manage, we have to manage through and waddle <laughs> through. There is a lot of unhappiness and things, not just things that happen around you, things happen to you. I mean, you can be in an auto accident or someone can lie about you and make your job difficult. I mean, there are just so many things that can happen. Choosing happiness sometimes is very difficult when unhappy things are happening to you. Yeah, there's two parts to that, Valerie. The first part is like how do you slow down the monkey mind idea? Because we're conditioned to always, the whole world is conditioned to keep us in this state of mind. Turn on the television and it'll show you or your radio, the commercials will blast us with what we don't have, what we need, what we're lacking, what we need more, what'll make me happy, a new car, a new lipstick, a new hair spray, whatever it is, that's my key to happiness. It's, we're bombarded with this idea that we're not that we're lacking the way we are and we need to get away from that. So I really like the ideas in the article. They're very they're limited, but they're a start, you know, meditate meditate, turn off your electronics, walk in the take a walk in the woods and be quiet and try and be still. Find some place away from that constant bombardment of not good enough. And just reach a state and be able to be calmer like that and try and be more present in the idea if you feel your mind wandering away when you're brushing your teeth, focus on brushing your teeth, feel the bristles on your teeth, 
feel the water running across your hands. It becomes alive for us in the present moment. Otherwise, we're doing something, but our minds are racing so far away, we don't even pay attention to where we are. The second half of what you were saying in that how to get away from that, how to forgive people, or how to be happy matters when things are happening to me in the world is through forgiveness. Because if I can forgive whole, holy, wholeful, you know, complete forgiveness, whatever's happening in the world is what's happening, and I don't judge it. Therefore, it doesn't have any effect on my state of being, and then that way I can remain happy regardless of what's happening. I think another part of that is a recognition that pain and suffering aren't the same thing. And the Course in Miracles will describe that too. So I can have pain in my life, but suffering is a choice. And we all know people that have very painful lives, whether they're sick with some type of disease or they have some type of handicap, but they always seem to be joyful. So how can that be? If pain is equated to suffering, how can they still be happy when they're having such a painful experience in their world? So it can't be the same thing. We need to make the distinction between what's happening to our body and in the forms and what's happening with my mind or our mind. The miracle is mind training. It trains our mind to only look at love because love has no opposite. Love can't be anything else, and we were focused on that instead of all the other things that pull us away from that or cloud love's presence, and we don't feel it, and therefore we feel lost and get consumed by our own consumption kind of idea. I don't know if that makes sense for you, but... Yes, it does. Does that sound... Nope, I understand that, and yes, it does. Right. So meditate. Slow your mind down. And forgive. The person, the best way of like, thinking approaching forgiveness is saying, would I accuse myself of doing that thing? And you run a 99.99% of the time say, no, I wouldn't accuse myself of doing that. So why would I accuse that other person? It must have been an error or a mistake or something else. It's not personal. And then I can get over it and come back. So I'm not going to stay in a state of happiness in my condition so I'm practicing it, but I can get back to it quicker by forgiveness. So I get, there's an upset, Oop, I'm not happy. I recognize I'm not happy. I ask my higher self, Holy Spirit, to see it differently. She tells me that I should look at it this way and that nothing really happened and I can go, oh, okay. And I can get back into my happy state a lot faster. So the miracle in the Course of Miracles, the miracle once in principles is that it collapses time but it does in a big picture of time, but it also collapses time. The time interval between when I'm upset and when I get back to my state of joy is is much smaller now than several years ago when I didn't know about the course. It would take me maybe years to get over a hurt or something that I thought somebody had done something to me or I did something to them. Now it's a matter of minutes. So when practicing it through that and mind mindfulness and changing my mind about who I think I am and who others are, that the Course can teach me that I can see the world a better way, a different way. And then I see that God's world is happy, what the Course says in Lesson 301. God's world is happy. So if I'm not being happy, I'm not seeing God's world. (laughs) I'm seeing something else. It's just kind of like a play on the ideas of being outside and thinking that I'm outside of love's embrace when that's not possible. Okay. That's that's awesome. All right. Well, let me read a little bit more from the article and have you all react to it. From the article, paradoxically, slowing down and focusing on what is happening in front of you right now, being present instead of always having your mind on the next thing will make you much more successful and happy. Expressions like live in the moment and carpe diem sound like cliches, yet science backs them up robustly. Research shows that the remaining present rather than constantly focusing on what to do next will make you much more productive and happier. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. 
battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I was just uh, sharing an excerpt from the article in the Time Magazine book. Uh, so let me let me do that again. Research shows that remaining present rather than constantly focusing on what you have to do next will make you more productive happier, and moreover, will give you an elusive quality that we attribute to the most successful people, and that's charisma. Multitasking, instead of helping us accomplish more things faster, actually keeps us from doing anything well. If you are able to give a task your undivided attention, you will accomplish it far more efficiently and quickly, also enjoying the process. When we are caught up in multitasking or preoccupied with the next thing we need to to cross off the list, not only are we harming our performance, we are harming our well-being. One study found that more people engaged in multitasking from word processing to text messaging and email, the, high, the more they did that, the higher their anxiety and depression levels tended to be. So really, it's kind of um, what Hugh was talking about. Do, let's do one thing, do meditation. Uh, Hugh, do, would you like to take over from there? You had a very good answer for that. Well, yes, thanks. Multitasking itself is a, isn't possible. We only do one thing at a time anyway. But it's doing them in such a rushed manner that we don't appreciate it, we don't feel it, therefore we don't experience it. And then it becomes mundane, and then it becomes something that's more of a torturous task than actually loving it and embracing it for whatever it is you're doing. So that's why in the article that it's saying, like, slow down a little bit. Just slow slow down. Take time to breathe. Look at the flowers. Go weed your garden type idea. Take a walk. Those ideas will slow you down to the matter that you'll start to feel life around you and feel the world, the breathing, the tide going in and out from the ocean is the world's breathing with us. And we can get in synchronization with that when we can calm down this panic that's running in my mind that 
there's, it's not good enough. It's all about accepting what is in this idea that God or love created me in, in joy and in happiness and that that's my state already. And if I can just let the other stuff go, I'll realize that. And then my life switches. What I see in the world is what I'm feeling but I have to feel the world first. I have to embrace what I'm doing. Look at the stuff and look at the colors and the sounds of whatever it is that you're doing, even if you're clicking on a typewriter or on your keyboard. And watch the lights and just be, be present with it. And it's a, such an amazing experience that way that you won't want to jump around anymore. Like the old movies with the guy that with the pie plate spinning on the stage, you know, and one starts wobbling and you run down the other side. I don't think anybody has a job that's not like that at some time, especially me. But take the time to do one thing at a time and you'll really come into embracing it and enjoying it, you know, after you accept it. So I think Eckhart Tolle says, first accept it, then you'll, you'll become into enjoyment with it. Don't look at it as something that I have to do in a checkbox aspect, but do it because you love it. Do it because you want to do it. And you'll see that you really do want to do it, and you'll see that it comes without effort, and it'll just be a whole different um, experience for you. The same thing that you used to do every day now become a joyful experience by just letting go of your own um, type of re resistance to the idea of doing it in the first place. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All, a lot of the things oh. that we have thought worked for us, helped us be more successful, uh, such as a to-do list, doing things more, quicker, um, all those things, what they do rather than help us, they, they keep us from our happiness. Our happiness is in the moment. Our happiness is in the moment. And if we do, I'll give you an example. Um, I was always too busy to play with my cats. I have two young uh, cats. And, you know, they're stuck in my apartment. And they need to be, how do you say, they, they, they need some stimulation. So I just started playing with them. Uh about 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the afternoon. And they are so much better and I'm present with them and I enjoy their responses. And you know what? I'm happier because I play with my cats. Now, that's not a huge thing maybe to everybody else, but it's pretty darn nice to me to live that way. We have to slow down choose what we pay attention to, not multitasking. Multitasking is like craziness. It's like trying to do, since, since we're only really good at one thing at a time, it's definitely trying to make us crazy. Uh, Valerie, do you have any opinions about that? Yeah, I think it's great that you play with your cats and that you uh, live in the moment. That's really, really fantastic. But if you don't mind, if you don't mind, not that that wasn't wonderful, but I read an article from um, a pursuit of happiness dot org, and I, mm -hmm. I thought it might. It's kind of interesting if you have a job that you know is is not the best job in the world. If you possibly can. Pick a job or uh, something you have to do all the time that is in alignment with your beliefs, with your strengths and your virtues, and you agree with your company. It's much easier to be happier because they're 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 not offending your sensibilities. So you're not feeling you, you don't have to overcome as much if you're in a place that you agree with and that you like what they're doing. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Because a lot of people work at places, you may work for Goldman Sachs, and maybe you can't stand what Goldman Sachs is doing, and you've got a lot to overcome and a lot of forgiveness to do. So if you possibly can't, don't try, don't work for a place where you have to forgive all the time. Good, good. Okay. Yes, indeed. Uh, is there anything you would like to add to that, Hugh? 
Yeah, it's, I, I love that idea, Valerie. Thanks. It's like this doesn't serve me any longer. We have to be willing to be able to let it go. When relationships or jobs or whatever it is doesn't serve us anymore, we need to be able to be okay, say, you know what, okay, because all things are shifting and changing. So we need to be aware of that and have the strength to do that and ask for help when needed from our higher self. Very good. Well, this is Penelope Neeson, your host on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Happiness is an inside Welcome back. This is your host, Penelope Neeson, bringing you little miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We've been talking about the science of happiness and the spirituality of happiness as The Course in Miracles uh, gives, gives it to us. So we were, what we have talked about today is that even though we humans have an unfortunate tendency to do more and more and try to accomplish more and more things because we think that will make us happy. Well, first of all, that doesn't make us happy. Second of all, we do a lot better when we focus on one task and get it done and accomplish that task. And the accomplishment of it, that helps us, that makes us happy. And on the other hand, we have been talking with Hugh McGreedy about The Course in Miracles, and that has a totally different perspective on happiness. Hugh, would you share that with us? Yes, thank you. Yeah, The Course in Miracles is directly opposite of what the world teaches us where happiness lies. And it it actually is a, a methodology or a curriculum to allow us to achieve this state by through the process of the workbooks, the lessons that are laid out inside of it. But what it does, it takes us from what the, it would it would symbolize as our nightmarish dream that it's, where a lot of us are experiencing right now, and through forgiveness and through the workbook lessons to free our minds up to become make, makes our dream a happier dream. So the course talks about the happy learner and the happy dreamer. But I just wanted to at the end of that. It'll prep, prepare us for our ultimate conclusion of us not realizing that we don't have to be here anymore and that we can go, go home to heaven where we never left. So I'd like to read you lesson 292, the happy outcome to all things is sure. And it's a quick paragraph here. God's promises make no exceptions. And he guarantees that only joy can be the final outcome found for everything. 
these big, these everythings and alls are meant to be everything and alls. Yet it is up to us when this is reached, how long we let an alien will appear to be opposing his is up to us. And while we think this will is real, we will not find the end. He has appointed as the outcome for all problems we perceive. Again, we need to let go of our definition of what's happening and not be able and then accept that what is happening from our creator. All trials we see in every situation that we meet. Yet is the ending certain, for God's will is done in earth and heaven. We will seek and we will find according to his will, which guarantees that our will is done. And that's the end of that lesson on 292. So happiness is an in, inside job. It's available to everyone when we can clear the other stuff out of the way, clear the blocks and the barriers and grievances to love's presence. And we'll know that it was we were never away from it. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. I love that job. We can make a choice, and it's really as easy as that. We can choose actually to change the internal channel, change the channel from CNN constantly negative news to the Discovery Channel, where we can find wonderful things. And when we can decide to be happy, what would happen? What would happen if you decided to be happy instead of listening to all the negative weather reports out there, how scary the the government is, how scary the Russia is? What would what would happen if you chose light? You chose happiness. This is Penelope Neeson, your host for Little Miracles on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You can choose to be happy. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. This has been Little Miracles with your host, Penelope. Tune in each and every week to hear Penelope as she helps you design a life in harmony with your soul's purpose in order to live life to the fullest, only on Penelope's Little Miracles. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.